very difficult to choose the right sort of manager to implement for you. It's very difficult to choose the right asset class that's going to perform at any one point in time. So the importance of the decision, and there's plenty of surveys to show it, whether you're DB, DC, private individual, your asset allocation choice is the most important decision that you will make in any investment planning, particularly in the longer term. And I think that's always the problem is that people have to think a lot longer term than their normal intuitive horizons. You know, this is not looking for Amazon Prime to our delivery. This is what's going to deliver results in five years, 10 years, 20 years, years time. And over that time, asset allocation options will change. You know, that new asset classes will emerge. You know, 10, 15 years ago, nobody had heard of infrastructure. Well, they had. It was in amongst property, it was in amongst their equities, but it wasn't a clearly defined asset class. Real estate used to be very popular in the 70s. You know, it fell out of favour in the 80s and 90s when equities were the only game in town. It's now back in favour as some form of alternative. The private equity market has only evolved over the last 20 or 30 years. And again, that's changed in various iterations. We have multiple different types of hedge fund strategies. We have different ways of doing things. But it always come down to the thing, fundamentally, make the right asset allocation choice. The most crucial thing is to define risk. And risk comes in a number of forms. I mean, that it's not obviously just the ones you can easily model. Um, so yes, we understand movements in rates, inflation, equity and credit. But I mean, how do you model reputation? How do you model operational risk? How do you model changing regulation? You know, often I'm sort of challenged. I mean, we invest a lot in, in the African continent and people will say, well, you know, are you worried about sort of corruption issues? And we say, no, you know, we think actually we're very aware of them. We think actually there's a lot of transparency. And if there are some local issues, we're probably better informed about them. The truth is that actually I've probably lost more money as an institutional investor through the unanticipated actions of civilized Western governments, things like QE, you know, the, the various bad asset programs, sudden abolition of tax reliefs in budgets. With that, that's what's cost me money as an investor, not that the fact that you know I'm not I have I'm not getting perfect opportunities. Is liquidity a a risk? Not if you're a long-term investor. You know, there's much talk about a liquidity risk premium. As a fund, we don't think it exists any longer. We prefer to focus on a complexity risk premium. We like assets which we can genuinely enhance. So particularly where we're doing off-market and private market transactions, before we buy anything, we have a business plan. And the business plan is not just how we will acquire the asset, it's how we will manage it, how we will enhance it. Most importantly, it's how we will sell it and who we will sell it to. And we work through all of these things and that's where we generate our returns from. We accept this asset is illiquid, but that doesn't actually bother us because we're buying it on a seven to 10 year framework We've got other assets which will deliver the income we need to feed our benefits in the short term. We're worried about the big sort of cash waterfall that's coming in the 30s and how we actually have enough assets to pay that off.